Hello, everybody. We're going to read Dear Mr. Henshaw by Beverly Cleary. Um, I love this book very much. It's written a little differently. It's written actually in first person, which means it uses the pronouns I and we. Because um, it is written in a diary in letter format. So as you can see on the cover, there's a little boy who is writing a letter. And um, since he is writing a letter, he's speaking directly to the reader in his own voice. So I checked this book out from the Internet Archive Library. And this is... Um, something about Beverly Cleary. Um, this is a little biography or synopsis about her as an author. And then this title page is really beautiful. It actually has a lot of different scenes in it in the collage. You can see different parts of the book. So you should take time and maybe pause this video and just see what you notice um, in this picture. Um, you see a boy on the bed and then a book. I see this semi truck or a rig. And so take time to look at these things and just come back to this picture every now and then. And we're going to start to read the book. So let's start page one, May 12th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, my teacher read your book about the dog to our class. It was funny. We licked it. Your friend, Lee Botts, boy. So think to yourself why he wrote licked it. What was he really trying to say? December 3rd. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I am the boy who wrote to you last year when I was in the second grade. Maybe you didn't get my letter. This year I read the book I wrote to you about called Ways to Amuse a Dog. It is the first thick book with chapters that I have read. The boy's father said city dogs were bored, so Joe could not keep the dog unless he could think of some seven ways to amuse it. I have a black dog. His name is Bandit. He is a nice dog. If you answer, I get to put your letter on the bulletin board. My teacher taught me a trick about friend. The I goes before E so that the at the end, you spell end. Keep in touch your friend Lee Botts. So as you can see in this letter, he has um, maybe another misspelled word at the bottom. He spelled touch wrong. Think how you do spell touch in the correct way. Also in the letter, you can see that he put his name in parentheses with a little bit of pronunciation. Um, and he's telling you that the E is pronounced as a long E. That's what the flat line above the E means. And we also learn his grade level. So think about um, maybe that's a reason why he might be struggling with some of his spelling. And as you know, spelling is something that you know, it takes a while to get to, um, to get better at. So let's keep reading now. November 13th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I am in the fourth grade now. I made a diorama of ways to amuse a dog. The book I wrote to you about two times before. Now our teacher is making us write to authors for book week. I got your answer to my letter last year, but it was only printed. Please, would you write to me in your own handwriting? I am a great enjoyer of your books. My favorite character in the book was Joe's dad because he didn't get mad when Joe amused his dog by playing a tape of a lady singing and his dog sat and howled like he was singing too. Bandit does the same thing when he hears singing. Your best reader, Lee Botts. I should warn you, I am outside reading this, so perhaps it might be a little windy and you might hear outside noises. So just please excuse them. So he went to another grade. So he started in one grade. And I think this was in first grade or maybe it was second. Oh, he said he was in second grade when he wrote the first letter. And now he's a little older, he's in third. And then on November 13th, he's in fourth. So now on this page, we'll see what he's in. December 2nd. 
Dear Mr. Henshaw, I got to thinking about ways to amuse a dog. When Joe took his dog to the park and taught him to slide down the slide, wouldn't some grown-up come along and say he couldn't let his dog use the slide? Around here, grown-ups who are mostly real old with cats get mad if dogs aren't on leashes every minute. I hate living in a mobile home park. I saw your picture on the back of the book. When I grew up, I want to be a famous book writer with a beard like you. I am sending you my picture. It is last year's picture. My hair is longer now. With all the millions of kids in the U.S., how would you know who I am if I don't send you my picture? Your favorite reader, Lee Bobs. Enclosure. Picture of me. We are studying business letters. October 2nd. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I am in the fifth grade now. You might like to know that I gave a book report on ways to amuse a dog. The class liked it. I got an A minus. The minus was because the teacher said I didn't stand on both feet. Sincerely, Lee Botts. So now we learn he's in fifth grade and he's still using ways to amuse a dog as a project book. Um, he's done a diorama, which is those, those shoes boxes that have like little scenes in them. I love those. And then now he's done a report. Um, he really needs to move on, but you know, some of us just like a certain book and we like to use it over and over again and read it too. And that's not, that's not bad actually. Um, so no worries there. And I like the way um, he wrote about why he got the A minus and because he didn't stand on both feet. We talked about um, presentations a lot this year and it is important to stand um, with your body straight up and, you know, when you're presenting, just like, you know, the president or any speaker would at a podium, just imagine yourself at a podium, kind of keeping yourself still. It's really important. So that's why he got the minus. November 7th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I got your letter and did what you said. I read a different book by you. I read Moose on Toast. I liked it almost as much as Ways to Amuse a Dog. It was really funny the way the boy's mother tried to look to think up ways to cook the moose meat they had in their freezer. 1,000 pounds is a lot of moose. Moose burgers, moose stew, moose meatloaf don't sound too bad. Maybe moose mince meat pie would be okay because with all the raisins and junk, you wouldn't know you were eating moose. Cream chip moose on toast, yuck. I don't think the boy's father should have shot the moose, but I guess there are plenty of moose up there in Alaska, and maybe they needed it for food. If my dad shot a moose, I would feed the tough parts to my dog, Bandit. Your number one fan, Lee Botts. September 20th, dear Mr. Henshaw, this year I'm the sixth grade in a new school in a different town. Our teacher is making us do author reports to improve our writing skills, so of course I thought of you. Please answer the following questions. Number one, how many books have you written? Number two, is Boyd Henshaw your real name or is it fake? Number three, why do you write books for children? Number four, where do you get your ideas? Number five, do you have any kids? Number six, what is your favorite book that you wrote? Number seven, do you like to write books? Number eight, what is the title of your next book? Number nine, what is your favorite animal? Number 10, Please give me some tips on how to write a book. This is important to me. I really want to know so I can get to be a famous author and write books exactly like yours. Please send me a list of your books that you wrote, an autographed picture, and a bookmark. I need your answer by next Friday. This is urgent. Sincerely, Lee Botts. Deliver the letter, the sooner, the better, the later, the letter, the matter I get her. What do all the duh um, take the place of? What word is that duh taking the place of? Let, I'll let you think about that. November 15th, dear Mr. Henshaw, at first I was pretty upset when I didn't get an answer to my letter in time for my report, but I worked it out, okay. I read what it said about you on the back of ways to amuse a dog and wrote real big on every other line, so I filled up the paper. On the book, it said you lived in Seattle, so I didn't know you had moved to Alaska, although I should have guessed from Moose on Toast. 
When your letter finally came, I didn't want to read it to the class because I didn't think Miss Martinez would like silly answers like your name is messing a round and you don't have kids because you don't raise goats. She said I had to read it. The class laughed and Miss Martinez smiled, but she didn't smile when I came to the part about your favorite animal was a purple monster who ate children who sent authors long lists of questions for reports instead of learning to use the library. Your writing tips were okay. I could tell you meant what you said. Don't worry, when I write something, I won't send it to you. I understand how busy you are with your own books. I hit the second page of your letter from Miss Martinez. That list of questions you sent for me to answer really made me mad. Nobody else's author put a list of questions to be answered, and I don't think it's fair to make me do more work when I already wrote a report. Anyway, thank you for answering my questions. Some kids didn't even get answers at all, which made them mad, and one girl almost cried. She was so afraid she would not get a good grade. One boy got a letter from an author who said real excited about getting a letter and wrote such a long answer, the boy had to write a long report. He guessed nobody ever wrote to that author before, and he sure wouldn't again. About 10 kids wrote to the same author who wrote one answer to all of them. There was a big argument about who got to keep it until Miss Martinez took the letter to the office and duplicated it. What does duplicate mean? Think about the context clues in that sentence and think about what you think that word means. About those questions you sent me, I'm not, oops, got a little excited. I'm not going to answer them and you can't make me. You're not my teacher. Yours truly, Lee Botts. P.S. When I asked you what the title of your next book was going to be, you said, who knows? Did you mean that was the title or you don't know what the title will be? And do you really write books because you have read books in the library and because writing beats mowing the lawn or shoveling snow? Hmm. November 16th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, Mom found your letter and your list of questions, which I was dumb enough to leave lying around. We had a big argument. She says, I have to answer your questions because authors are working people like anyone else. And if you don't took the time to answer my questions, I should answer yours. She says, I can't go through life expecting everyone to do everything for me. She used to say the same thing to dad when he left socks on the floor. Well, I got to go now. It's bedtime. Maybe I'll get around to answering your 10 questions, and maybe I won't. There isn't any law that says I have to. Maybe I won't even read any more of your books. Disgusted reader, Lee Botts. P.S. If my dad was here, he would tell you to go climb a tree. <laughs> what idiom is that for? Think about that. Go climb a tree. What is his dad really saying when he's telling... Um, or figuratively saying when he's telling um, the author to go climb a tree. What does that mean? Oh, you can see him writing the letter at his desk. It's a nice desk and a picture of himself on, on the desk too. November 20th, dear Mr. Henshaw, mom is nagging me about your dumb old questions. She says if I really want to be an author, I should follow the tips in your letter. I should read look, listen, think, and write. She says the best way she knows for me to get started is to apply the seat of my pants to a chair and answer your questions and answer them fully. So here it goes. Number one, who are you? Like I've been telling you, I am Lee Botts, Lee Marcus Botts. I don't like Lee for a name because some girl, excuse me, some people don't know how to say it or think it's a girl's name. Mom says with a last name like Bots, I need something fancy, but not too fancy. My dad's name is Bill, and my mom's name is Bonnie. She says Bill and Bonnie sound like something out of a comic strip. I am just a plain boy. This school doesn't say I'm gifted and talented, and I don't like soccer very much, the way everybody at this school is supposed to. I'm not stupid either. Number two, what do you look like? I already sent you my picture, but maybe you lost it. I'm sort of medium. I don't have red hair or anything like that. I'm not real big like my dad. Mom says I take after her family. Thank goodness. That's the way she always says it. In first and second grade, kids used to call me Lee the Flea, but I have grown. 
Now when the class lines up according to height, I am in the middle. I guess you could call me the mediumest boy in the class. This is hard work to be continued, maybe. November 22nd. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I wasn't going to answer any more of your questions, but mom won't get the TV repaired because she says it was rotting my brain. This is Thanksgiving vacation and I am bored. I decided to answer a couple of your rotten questions with my rotten brain. Ha, joke. Number three, what is your family like? Since dad and bandit went away, my family is just mom and me. We all used to live in a mobile home outside of Bakersfield, which is in California's great Central Valley. We studied about it in school. When mom and dad got divorced, they sold the mobile home and dad moved into a trailer. Dad drives a big truck, a cab over job. That means the cab is over the engine. Some people don't know that. The truck is why my parents got divorced. Dad used to drive for someone else, hauling stuff like cotton, sugar beets, and other produce, produce around Central California and Nevada. But he couldn't get owning his own rig for cross-country hauling out of his head. He worked practically night and day and saved a down payment. Mom said we'd never get out of the mobile home when he had to make such big payments on that rig. And she'd never know where he was when he hauled cross-country. His big rig sure is a beauty with a bunk in the cab and everything. His rig, which cut truckers call a tractor, but everyone else calls a truck, has 10 wheels, two in front and eight in the back. So he can hitch up to anything, flatbeds, refrigerated vans, a couple of gondolas. In school, they teach you that a gondola is some kind of boat in Italy, but in the U.S., it is a container for hauling loose stuff like carrots. My hand is all worn out from all this writing, but I try to treat mom and dad the same, so I'll get to her mom next time. Your reader, Lee Botts. So a gondola is kind of like those open um, containers that sometimes you'll see trucks driving along on the highway with, and then like rocks are flying out of it, or you'll see them on trains, and they'll be open, and they'll be like gravel or a bunch of stuff stacked on top. So um, that is something that you can see and then flatbeds are with a truck and then there's just a long flat like extension from the back of the truck with nothing on it but sometimes then they have stuff on it and then of course the refrigerated vans well they're cold inside and you can have vegetables being carried in that all right so those are really big trucks and it seems like um, his dad has one where he can actually sleep in it. And if you ever seen the big poofy part on top of the truck, um, where this, the driver sits, they have like a bed, you know, they can have like a TV in there. It's pretty fancy stuff. And they usually park them like at truck stops or Walmarts, parking lots and sleep overnight or sleep for a few hours actually, and then head on out. All right, let's read one more page and we'll stop. November 23rd, dear Mr. Er, excuse me, Mr. Henshaw, why should I call you dear when you are the reason I'm stuck with all this work? It wouldn't be fair to leave mom out. So here's question three continued. Mom works part-time for Catering by Katie, which is run by a real nice lady mom knew when she was growing up in Taft, California. Katie says all women who grew up in Taft had to be good cooks because they went to so many potluck suppers. Mom and Katie had some other ladies make fancy food for weddings and parties. They also bake cheesecake and apple strudel for restaurants. Mom is a good cook. I just wish she would do it more at home, like the mother in Moose on Toast. Almost every day, Katie gets something good to put in my school lunch. Mom also takes a couple of courses at the community college. She wants to be an LVN, which means licensed vocational nurse. They help real nurses, except they don't stick needles in people. She is almost always home when I get home from school. Your ex-friend, Lee Okay, we're going to stop there for today. And thank you so much for listening. Come back tomorrow.